Hello, everybody from uh, Dr. Filippo. Welcome again to another um, program of the Achiever on the Make. Today, I've got with me Sarah and Martin. Um, now, Martin is a chiropractor. Sarah is the wife, and she's the assistant. And they, I consider them great achievers. Uh, we've known each other for a while now. We're part of the same coaching program, and um, they're super positive. They, they got, um, they've been in, uh, in the show for a long time and uh, they have some uh, wisdom to share with us. So I just want to pass the ball over to you. I don't want to spoil it too much. And uh, tell us, uh, before we get into uh, the question, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, yeah, I'll go, I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, of course, I'm a chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor for 18 years. So I um, went to university uh, in 1995. Um, having previously just bummed around the world as a, a surfer uh, and, a, and, a, and a beach lifeguard. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Surfed all my life. Um, uh, was, was a water ski instructor in America, a uh, professional lifeguard in Wales and then uh, in Australia. So that, that, that was my life. Um, so I love the ocean. We only live a couple of minutes away from it. So always, always um, a super passion of mine. And then um, I suppose the, the, if kind of like everybody's got a kind of backstory and kind of our, our tragedy, you know, comes comes the light. So um, uh, at the age of 15, I, I, I fell six, like 60 feet and broke my sternum, my ribs, um, and a, uh, a vulsal fractures, the spinous process, a T4 and T5. Um, so I kind of nearly died. The surgeon said that my sternum was just a, how I didn't punch in my heart or lungs. It was, it was a miracle. So that was when I was 15. Um, about six months later, you know, I was back surfing, back playing rugby, doing all the things that, you know, young kids do. And then at age 20, um, I fell off a horse and uh, broke um, my spine again. <laughs> uh, that was my lower back. Uh, so I had a, a pass fracture at the L5, um, became paralyzed. Uh, because I had um, uh, bleeding in the spinal canal, so I compressed my spinal cord. Um, but fortunately, um, I was I could move my legs uh, the day a day later. So you know I've I've, I've had trauma, I've had pain, and um, so that kind of kind of got me um, thinking. So yeah, so one trauma at the age of fifteen, and the other trauma at the age of twenty, and again a couple of well, about eight months later, you know, I was back playing rugby again, doing all the things I wanted to do um, after my second trauma. And then um, a couple of years later, my dad, well, my dad died actually when he was 57. He died of prostate cancer. You know, and I'm coming up to 55 now in a month's time. So, you know, there's not too much of a gap. So, and when I used to drive him to um, have his uh, chemotherapy, you know, we'd be chatting on the way down, but on the way back, he'd be extremely sick, you know, hallucinating. So, you know, I was like, you know, this isn't, this isn't right. You know, I don't understand, you know, and I didn't have any knowledge at the time because, you know, I wasn't educated. So I was just um, a little bit frustrated with, my lack of ability to, to help. Mm -hmm. And I could see that the, the therapy was actually killing him as opposed to making him better. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like a wake up call really um, for, for me at that particular time. And so I thought, right, I've got to do, do something. And uh, uh, so I went to university and I studied sports science because I, I, I didn't know where to go you know so i thought okay if i study sports science that, you know it, it has some of the elements that um, i think i need to know and so i was two years into my sports science uh, in 95 and i was in the cafeteria and this was at, at the university of glamorgan and i was sitting down having a coffee and a woman came and sat next to me um, because I was more or less a mature student then, and it was um, Susan King, and um, who then developed the chiropractic program at uh, Weill. Nice. Um, so, and because she thought I was a lecturer because I was um, older, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she sat down and I said, oh, "You know what you're doing?" I said, oh, I'm, "I'm in sports science," and she went, oh, "Okay." She said, oh, "I'm just starting up the chiropractic program," 
I was like, oh, chiropractic. I said, just tell me a little bit about it. And she said, you know, uh, this is what it does. And this is what it, you know, this is, this is what the program involves. And as soon as she said it to me, it was like the light bulb, you know, boom. I said, right. I said, I'm leaving sports science. I'm coming onto your program. And she said, oh, well, we can't because we've only, we've, we're full and we're only taking uh, graduates on in the first year. Mm. So I, I said, okay, put me on the list for the next year, for the following year. And, um, so I went, to, I was in her office every week, making sure that she hadn't forgot that I put me on the list. And so, you know, she, she got to know me. And of course, then I went onto, onto the list. Um, so we started in 2002, graduated in um, 2000, oh, sorry, I graduated in 2002 from WIOC. And then I went back to work there then as a, um, a floor tutor in 2003, just part time. Uh, we opened our own practice in 2003 also. Um, then I worked for the GCC as um, an examiner right. for a number of years. Um, and then in 2008, um, I, we got asked to go to um, the Barcelona College of Chiropractic and I set up the, the chiropractic um, technique department um, from 2008 to 2013. So, so we set, I set up the, the chiropractic technique, um, year one and year two and year three uh, for the Barcelona College of Chiropractic. And then we returned back to Wales then in 2013 um, because our daughter needed to be in, a, in an English school and an English education. So we, we came back then. And then we opened up our practice, um, which was about 50 yards from our old practice. Yeah. And we've been in there ever since. So that's kind of like our our kind of story. Yeah. Can, um, I, can I ask you a couple a couple of things? Because um, yeah. a couple of things that I thought it would be, it would be good for for me to know and uh, and other people that is listening. Um, you said that the therapy was was not saving your your father was killing it. Why did you say yeah. why did you say that? Because on the we on the way down, so we drive to Cardiff because that's where the, the cancer center is, mm -hmm. uh, which is about 20 minutes from us. And we'd be chit-chatting in the car, um, you know, normal like we are now. On the way back, um, you know, he, all the color would be gone from him. He'd be gray. Um, he'd, he'd be sick. Um, and then he'd start hallucinating. And so I can always remember one thing he said to me. So we're driving back and he said, God, look at that lovely yacht. And I said, oh, and I didn't want to, you know, disappoint him. I said, yeah, it's absolutely lovely, isn't it? So we're driving down the motorway and he, he could see this yacht driving down the other side because he, he, you know, he loved the sea and things like that. And so, and then because, he, you know, um, because my dad was a, a builder, so he was strong, he was big and strong. And, and I could see that, the, you know, he's probably about 15 stone and over a, a year, he had gone down to about six stone. So he had lost a tremendous amount of weight. And, you know, uh, so you, you, could see, you could see the life just being taken away from him, um, from the cancer, which had been misdiagnosed as low back pain by the doctor, but he had prostate cancer that had metastasized into the spine so um so just th those things really you know they're, they're massive drivers you know emotional drivers that you know when you see that happening to your parent and you you, you have no way of helping them as a um to to make them better um and you can see the effect that the traditional treatment is having and and taking life away and not putting life in so the side the side effects there they were coming with uh with the treatment as well mm. yeah so and i i really liked what, what you said when uh, when you were talking to to this lady from from weok and um and said uh, when she talked she told you about chiropractic you were like yes i want to do it if he's not this year it's going to be next year what did she say that intrigued you so much that you just wanted to go for it. Yeah, well, she is, you know, um, 
because I had I had the conversation with one of the lecturers in sports science, and I and I said, you know, what can you do with sports science? And he said, well, not really that much. You know, either become a, a lecturer or you know, that's about it, really. At at that time, you know, that is much more common you now. Um, so when I spoke to Sue, she was just saying, you know, it's it's about um, you know, correcting the spine, um, making the nervous system um, work better, more efficiently better, so then the, the body can have better health. I think that's the way she explained it. And, you know, so all of those things where, well, I couldn't help my dad when she explained about, you know, how the body can heal through the nervous system and it can adapt by the things, good things that you place into it. You know, that was like, Oh, that's it. That that's that's exactly what I need. That's mm -hmm. what I need to learn. So then I can go and show other people what to do in order not to have the same experience that I had. That's so that's the kind of the reason why is to make sure that or help families that have been through that type of emotional trauma and don't have any answers to try and ease that and give them support and give them answer or answers or help them that's awesome i like yeah. it i like it that's cool that's a cool story that's a cool story yeah. you can feel the heart when you tell the story yeah <laughs> it's uh, for me too yeah. um sorry is there is there anything you want to add or is is there anything how how is your how's your journey been through this well, uh, our journey has been quite interesting, really. The, re the reason we got together in the first place was because I was on my own uh, journey into exploring alternative or natural ways to heal whilst I was working in a corporate situation. And I'd start to get more interested in how people heal naturally and started to do various courses. And this was before we had actually met, wasn't it? And through my corporate job or my job in the corporate world, um, I met Martin's cousin and he, she set us up on a blind date. And so when we got together then, <laughs> um, <laughs> which was bizarre, <laughs> um, and that was it because I was looking for a way to get out of the corporate world and, and work more holistically with people. We got together and because the what, what he was looking for, i.e. for chiropractic and what I can do, it felt like a really good way to move forward with natural healing then for people. And so um, luckily the skills that I learned being in the corporate world helped us to start our own business then so I could bring that in in relation to you know how are we going to set up systems etc etc so um whilst I was getting bored of my jobs my corporate world jobs they really gave me a good foundation for us to get started and be our own bosses and work in a field that we both enjoy really so so that was I think everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and so yeah. um you know you can tell sometimes when your life is sort of not going the way that it's meant to in relation to filling your life purpose mm -hmm. and you know we all go down these little side shoots and think oh this doesn't feel quite right for me um the key thing i think sometimes is just to acknowledge oh something's out of balance here what can i do to reset my course and i think once you make or are aware of that the the universe will open up to you and give you little steps to follow and bread comes to follow so they go if i just go and do this let's just see where this will lead um and and then things will open up for you and as a consequence i met martin we were both on the same way you know wavelength with regards to where we saw us using our talents in our life and and um we just went with it really and just you just got to follow the signposts i think and just keep moving forward and be very um, purposeful and not be um, swayed by perhaps people who are around you that might say, oh, don't do that, it's a bit risky. You know, mm. you just gotta stay focused and, and move forward. And, and, you know, we've built up a really lovely family business mm. as a consequence, really, yeah. doing what we love, but also having time for ourselves too. So I think it's important um, to remember, you know, what is it that you get your joy out of and just follow that joy because everything else will 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 follow really and i think this particular moment in history we've never had a better time to be able to sort of reset what we're doing 
yeah. ask ourselves, you know, are we happy with what we're doing? And if not, just make little course corrections. You don't have to take a big leap, but just make small changes that will lead you to where you want to be, really. That is right. That is right. And uh, yeah, because I, I like what, what you said. I mean, is I mean, for people that you might listen to this in, in a year time or whenever, uh, this is, you know, coronavirus time. And, um, and it's funny that every, everybody I'm, uh, um, I'm interviewing, they talk about challenges. And, you know, challenge is always leading to some, some cool stuff. So, and this is the beauty of now, you know, crisis. Um, was it, um, was it Blair, uh, Blair Singer that said, um, crisis is change, is change trying to happen. So yeah, everybody's I mean, making amazing sorry. stuff. No, well, it is. And I think sometimes you've got to look at a challenge. They can be scary, but you're never given anything that you're not capable of achieving. So I think if you hold that in your energy to say, OK, I'm being given this opportunity here. And as scary as it is, um, you just got to take that step, because once you get through it, you'll think, oh, why was I so scared about that thing that you just I think. You know, challenge is always an opportunity to grow, and that's what we're here for. We're here to grow, you know, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, whatever, you know, whatever label you want to put on it. And I think the more you push yourself forward, the better you become and the better everybody else around you becomes yeah. because yeah. they benefit from that better version of you as well. Awesome. I wrote it down. I said, you know, you're not, you're not given anything you're not capable of achieving. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome awesome well thank you so much i got uh, one more so uh wh whoever's going to listen to this it might be chiropractors might be someone that wants to start uh, their own business or want to reach a dream um what is one or two tips that you can give that someone can you know turn off the recording and say oh cool i'm going to do this now well the biggest tip from 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 my perspective and my kind of you know um journey you know i know there's a cliche but it really is just belief in self and 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 that's the pinnacle for everything really you know because if you don't believe in your core values and your core self then you just can't move forward you know and you've got to be clear in in your objectives too you know so you know who am i and what do i want to achieve and you know don't worry about any of the challenges they they just set to to test the the you know the as blair says the little voice between your ears yeah um and you have to have a symbiotic relationship with those little voices because you know you you, you can't push it away but you just have to respect it have a conversation with it um agree or disagree and then move on in your objectives but belief belief in self has to be the first tick in any box mm. for for from for me anyway that's 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 everything you have to be really um clear on what what the universe and what innate and how how that's guiding you and the information that it gives to you on a daily basis and you have to listen to what it's given you and and react positively because you can all the signs the universal signs the innate signs are there all the time but you have to be tuned into that vibrational field to accept those messages and accept those those that guidance from from innate and the universe so that's and that and that all comes down to self hmm. how do you how do you tune in into that well <clears throat> So I, I, I meditate and um, it's a kind of like probably a little bit of a, there's, a, there's another kind of element to this. And I had an experience about four years ago mm -hmm. where I was meditating and I always struggled to meditate because I just, you know, I'm a chiropractor, it's difficult for me to focus, you know, so, you know, I'd be meditating and things would just like a little bunny would run past, you know, oh God, I can't focus. <laughs> And then one day I was just sitting down and I felt this really beautiful um, energy just right, came right in front of me. And it, it, it was just pure, pure universal love. If I had to um, put a label on it, it was the most intense, beautiful, 
uh, expression of love that that you've ever felt. It'd be like you know, the, like the first time I met Sarah, it was that kind of feeling. Yeah. <laughs> or or the first time you you pick up your your newborn baby and you you smell that. It's just that innate kind of like that innate feeling, that innate love. So I was just sitting there, and then this presence just came in, and um, it does. And as I was just looking at myself all of my cells and my body just started to disintegrate and it it got sucked into this this energy of love and light right in front of me and then the next thing i saw was me and this this energy looking down on the earth with me as an outline sitting on the sofa and then it started to show me where all my blockages and all my challenges Mm. that come that, that they had sent me in my life and the um and i either listened to them or not but i didn't understand at that time so and then we moved further further off into the universe so then we could see the whole of the universe and then we could feel the whole of the universe and and I say this, there's no, there's no drugs involved, yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is yeah, no, I, I don't drink either. So, that's cool. Um, so that that so that that's that's really then was again it sent me off into another level of consciousness and, and awareness, and you know I I ended you know we're all infinite energy, that's all we are. So um, so that was a, another um, level of. Um, ability to understand again about who we are our self and our relationship to to innate and universal energy that is such a cool experience yeah, but so. i know a lot of people can get hung up on meditating and mm. say oh i can't do it yeah, it, it, it doesn't true. work for me and i think people get hung up on a perfect way to meditate and there isn't um and so i think for some people if you're not sure you've got to be absolutely clear i think on what it is that you want and i think you've got to once you know what it is what you want then obviously everything else will fall into place but getting that um stillness or listening to what it is that you actually need or, or want in your life sometimes it's not easy to meditate and just shut off so um a good tip to know whether you are sometimes people will say oh i don't know if i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing with my life i don't feel quite right is to tune into your body that's the easiest your body is a big barometer of you know are things going right in your life or do you need to course correct and um being energy beings that we are you know not everything can be corrected on a, on a physical level it needs to be correct corrected on an energetic level and the easiest way to do that is to just sometimes quieten yourself mm -hmm. and just notice where you're holding tension in your body or if there's an ache here and an ache there and just get into a quiet conversation with your body. It doesn't happen overnight, you just got to practice it. But the more that you ask your body, hang on, why have I got this ache here? I haven't done anything to make it feel like that, but it could be something that's... Um, sort of like an, an energy block because you're believing something in a certain way or you've got a certain outlook that you just need to be aware of clean it out and that clarity will then step you make you know make you step in the right direction forward then i'm trying to make it as simple as possible but it's all about being more in tune with yourself and an easy way to do that if you find meditation hard is to just check in with your body what's going on today yeah. Am I am I aching somewhere? Have I got a niggle somewhere? Am I thinking something? Where did that thought come from? Whose is it? Is it mine or have I just picked it up from someone else? Yeah. If it's not your stuff, ditch it. That's, That's a good place to start. And what's you know what's what's the best? What's a better time than now? That you know at, at time for you know go for a walk, be on your best own. Best place, yeah, absolutely. Best place in nature. That's why we live on this wonderful world. It, we've been given everything we need to survive with shelter, food, sunshine. It's all we need. And I think we've lost that connection with Mother Earth. Mm. And if we just get out and reconnect, go and sit by a tree, hug a tree, whatever you want to do, just sit and be in nature. And that will give you the biggest energy boost you could ever get and be thankful and be grateful 
for the opportunity to connect with nature as well and that will set you on your road mm. that's awesome you want to be. this is this has been so good and i think i'm, I'm going to listen to this again and again because uh, there was so <laughs> fun guys. and uh yeah i just want to thank you i'm um, I'm, mindful, I'm mindful of your time, so I don't want to keep you um, uh, too long. One more question I would ask is, um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, want to know more about you, or want to know more about, you know, coming and, um, and see you as a chiropractor, well, how do they get in touch with you? Okay, probably through our website is the quickest, or, or send us a message on... Um, We've got a YouTube channel, haven't we? Yeah. So they can contact us through that. We, we allow people to leave comments. So they can get to us through that way, on our website, on Instagram, Facebook we're on as well. So we're on a lot of the, the social media sites. And just drop us a line and we'll be happy to get in touch with you that way. Then. Perfect, perfect. What's the, what's the website called? A website's walkerchiropractic.co.uk. Awesome. Okay. Thank so you. And my YouTube, my YouTube, YouTube channel is... Uh, Dr. Martin Walker, DC. Awesome. Okay, so um, make sure uh, everybody that you get and check them out. They got some cool stuff happening. So I uh, wanna thank you again, uh, sorry Martin, for, uh, for the time. It's been awesome, I learned lots of stuff. I took some notes and um, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I will uh, see you again soon. Ciao for now. Fantastic. Very Bye. Bye-bye.